Hey guys, welcome to the RevitKid.com. Today I'm going to show you how to turn your recessed lights on. Um, the stock Revit lights, if you rendered them, you might have noticed that they produce light, but you can't see the light source. You can't see where it's coming from. So what we got to do is we have to create a material that looks like a light source. Uh, this was brought on by a Revit form question. If I pull it up, this is the image. They said they wanted their rendering to look like this. So I'm going to show you really quickly how to make that. So if I go in my scene, you can see I select the light. It's a six inch downlight recessed can. So this is the, the default um, Autodesk light. So I'm going to edit the family. I'm going to select the light and I'm going to edit the family. Now once inside the family, what we have to do is we have to create an extrusion, the shape of the light, so this round cylinder shape. And we have to make sure it's not below the light source, so it's not blocking the light source. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go into my elevation. It doesn't matter which one, front, back, left, or right. And I'm going to make a reference plane. And now this reference plane is going to be a specific distance. So RP for reference plane, by the way, for uh, keyboard shortcut. If not, under create, it's under datum, reference plane. So now this reference plane, I'm going to dimension it. from the reference plane that is the light source. Now you could you could set this reference plane different ways. You can have it completely separate from the light source. I like to do it with the light source so that when you move the light source, everything moves with it. So here I'm going to set the dimension to something like let's say a half inch away. I'm going to select the dimension. I'm going to lock it. Now what you want to do is you want to draw your cylinder, which is going to be your light source. So I'm going to create, I'm going to go to extrusion. I'm going to pick my plane and I'm going to pick the, the reference plane I just drew and I'm going to go to my ceiling plan. I'm sorry, I'm going to go to my floor plan. And I have to change the scale because you see it's all getting in the way. I'm actually going to go to my 3D view. I think it's easier since we already have the, the reference plane set. I'm going to go to pick line and I'm going to click the inside diameter of the cylinder and then I'm going to lock it. I'm going to do the same thing on the other side and I'm going to lock it. Now when I click finish you'll see I just got a warning real quickly that said light source is blocked. That's because our cylinder went down as you can see in the elevation here. So I'm actually going to make this go up. If you want, you could do another reference plane or you could just keep it the distance. I like using reference planes, so let's make it a quarter inch thick. I'm going to use the align command and align it and then lock it. And I'm going to also lock that reference plane. So now they're locked. So now what's going to happen is if I go to my family types, You could see if I was to change the radius. So now if I change the radius, my cylinder will move with it. You can see there it moved with it. So now what we want to do is we want to bring the light source to a point that is visible. So by default, Revit actually just locks the location of this light source. You can see that number three there. If I was to select it, you can see that's part of it. I like to make a parameter out of it. So let's unlock it. Let's add parameter and say light source depth. Now you'll see if I was to go to my family types and change my light source depth, which is right here to something like one inch and click apply, you'll see everything move down including my new cylinder. So let me bring back some of these parameters. I'm going to make it a four inch radius. I'm actually going to bring the light source depth even closer. I'm going to do something like a half inch and you'll see it all move down. I'm going to click OK. Now the last thing we want to do is we want to apply a material to this new cylinder. So you can see I selected it there. So now we can create a, a parameter if you want for that material so that you can select it and change it later. I don't think it's necessary uh, because I don't think you're going to be changing it later, but 
do what's best for you. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to create a new material. So I'm going to click create new material. I'm going to rename it light source on it's probably not a good name actually. Let's say recessed Let's try and rename this. Recessed can glass on. Something a little more descriptive. Now if we go to appearance, and on the top right here, there's that little replace this asset button. You want to click there. And if you just search for the term light, and go down to our glass in our appearance library, you can see there's a light bulb on. These are different options, there's uh, different colors. I'm just going to use light bulb on. So I'm going to replace that with light bulb on. And you can see that's my new material. I'm going to click OK. Now I'm going to load this back into the family. I'm going to overwrite. And now if you'll remember, here was our original image. Now I'm going to run through and I'm going to render this image again. So let me click render and I'll be right back. Okay, so I'm back, the rendering's done, and you can see we've got our lights on, which is pretty cool. So if I was to save this to the project, I'll click between the two. Here is the original, and here's the new. So you can see right away it adds a, a bunch of life to your renderings, and I hope this helps you.